I read a lot more than 100 programming books in the last years. And I know like 100 sounds like a lot, but I had to do it because when you're working and you're trying to solve a problem, you won't always have a course or a tutorial readily available. So I found books to be the quickest way to learn something new. And I know we live in a world where video content is praised as the best way to learn how to code. And that's true to a certain extent. It's true up until you start working and you need to do some quick research and solve a problem fast. At that point, you have about four options. You can check Stack Overflow, you can check documentation, you can check a book on the subject, or you can ask ChatGPT. So I formed the habit of reading technical books and to dive deep into documentation. If I was getting started now, probably ChatGPT would always be my first go-to and probably I would end up reading a lot less books. But still, building a habit to read and understand technical concepts is very, very important, especially if you want to have a good career as a programmer. That's why I'm going to give you four practical books that you're going to always come back to and you're going to use as a quick reference whenever you need to catch up on some concepts. And at the end, I'm also going to give you some tips on how to best read technical books, at least what works for me. Fluent Python. This book dives into the world of effective Python programming. Many programmers, even experienced ones, they only scratch the surface of what Python can do. And this book actually explores how to use Python to write code that is not just functional, but also shorter, faster, and more readable. It's not an easy read, and you're going to need to practice a lot. But I think with a bit of daily dedication, you can get through it in maybe a month or two. Python Object-Oriented Programming. OOP is a design paradigm that is core to many programming languages, including Python. This book gives a straightforward and clear understanding of object-oriented design, and it uses Python to explain these essential concepts. It covers topics such as classes, data encapsulation, inheritance, polymorphism, abstraction, and exceptions. And not just in theory, but also by focusing on their practical application in order to create well-designed software. This book doesn't just teach Python syntax, it will also build your confidence because you're going to be a better programmer. And these two books so far, paired together, will definitely make you a better and a more efficient programmer. The third book is Designing Data Intensive Applications. This is a practical book for software engineers and for solutions architects. It focuses on understanding the data landscape and it's a great read. This book is extremely detailed and you're going to get a lot from it. You're going to get to look under the hood of existing systems. You're going to get to analyze the architectures of major services and you're going to see how they're built. And this is, in my opinion, the best and most important feature of this book. You get to understand how to actually design scalable data applications. And the last book that I want to recommend is the book that I used to dive deep into machine learning. It's on its third edition and it's called Python Machine Learning. This is by far the best and most straightforward book that I read on machine learning. To be fair, there are a lot more other great resources to learn machine learning, but this one did it for me and I have to recommend it. You can find the link down in the description to my Amazon page where you're going to see all of these books together with all my other book recommendations. Now the trick with books is to limit the number of books that you buy because otherwise you're just going to keep looking for books rather than reading them. Book buying is actually a procrastination method because you feel like you're doing something towards your goal. But in reality, you're just dancing around the fire, postponing active learning. So the best thing to do is to buy one or two books on a subject and then you can just get started. Good or bad, you're going to figure it out along the way. And after you buy the book, you have to set realistic expectations because you won't be able to read it like you would read a Stephen King book. It doesn't just flow like that because your brain needs to understand the concepts that you're reading. It's not a visual exercise, it's engineering. And it might take you a couple of days to go through a chapter and that's fine because you gotta practice what you're learning. When I read technical books, I usually skip through a lot of sections and then I move ahead and then I come back to them, then I move ahead and come back to them and there's a lot of back and forth. I don't really read linearly because this helps me get a better sense of what the whole book covers. And by doing this, I know where I can skip ahead for some more info related to another topic. And the second thing that I like is to have my laptop next so I can try out what I'm learning. If I want to understand things in more depth, then it's easy for me to just Google some deeper explanations. Also, if the book has code samples, I like to test them out and make them work. The best thing is actually when they're outdated because many people look, they complain when that happens, but it's actually a blessing in disguise. And the reason why it's a blessing in disguise is that you need to do some extra research to see how you can fix them. And that makes you a better programmer overall. If the code just works, then fine. You get instant gratification. But if the code doesn't and you have to fix it, then it increases your understanding of how the code actually works. So don't complain about outdated code snippets because it can actually work out to be a good thing for your learning. So the takeaway is that you should always aim for understanding what you read. This is the goal. Now how fast you read and the time in which you finish the book. It actually works out better if you don't finish it. But what you read, you understand well. And once you take your time and you allow yourself the space to learn and you apply what you're learning, you're going to love reading technical books. I hope that this video helped you. Hit the like button, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.